Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Insider's Report webinar about hiking the Blue Ridge Parkway. We're super excited to have author Randy Johnson here today with us. He has written some wonderful books about how to get out and about on the parkway. Um, he is the author of Hiking the Blue Ridge Parkway, Best Easy Day Hikes of the Parkway, and also the award-winning Grandfather Mountain, The History and Guide to an Appalachian Icon. Um, he is also uh, very involved in trail uh, maintenance and construction and um, just making sure that it's a great place to hike for everyone. Um, he's the task force leader for the Mountains to Sea Trail from Grandfather Mountain to Blowing Rock. So um, he not only writes about this, he really lives out there on the trail and uh, puts his uh, words into action. So I am going to hand over the program to Randy. Thank you so much, Randy, for being here. Thank you for, for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, well, let, let's, let's get started with the program. My coffee table book about Grandfather Mountain is an award-winning look at the summit that many people think is the peak of the parkway. But the guidebook choice for parkway travelers is between my 350 page Hiking the Blue Ridge Parkway and a smaller volume of just the parkways, best easy hikes. I Randy, see. Uh, Randy, I hate to interrupt. I'm sorry. Uh, we're not seeing your slides right now. So if you would share your screen, they seem to have disappeared. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Okay. Well, uh, shall I? Why don't I back up and start again, if that's okay? Um, so. Basically, I've just introduced uh, the Grandfather Mountain book and, and pointed to the fact that my two parkway guidebooks are really the choice if, uh, if you, you're going to be a parkway traveler or a parkway hiker. Um, I see the parkway as a portal to the entire Southern Appalachian experience. So the bigger of the two guidebooks features not just the parkway's trails, but hikes in the parks and forests that lie all along the road. That, that comprehensive concept features plentiful National Geographic topo maps, full color photographs, and a detailed mile by mile log to the roadside that even recommends nearby dining, lodging, and travel destinations. The parkway already ranks as the most visited unit of the national park system, but the pandemic proved just how truly popular parkway trails are. It also made it crystal clear how important it is to protect the views, trails, and facilities that so many Americans rely on. That's why both books feature the foundation. I invited Foundation CEO Carolyn Ward to author a foreword for the big guy book, and her eloquence bolsters why I call these books advocacy trail guides. Besides books, dozens of my magazine and internet articles over the years have urged support for the foundation. And, and that goes back to having one of the foundation's first license plates until my son, quote, forgot and let the plate expire while his car sat at college. DMV refused my pleas to renew it. So um, um, I'm waiting for that next, hopefully, electric car to remedy the situation. The book showcase how foundation funds improve facilities and protect the parkway. And that includes touting the foundation's North Carolina license plate program seen here on a hybrid car. A new Virginia version is now available also. The list of the foundation's contributions range from new interpretive signing to award-winning innovative concepts like the Growing Track Trail program. Hiking the Blue Ridge Parkway tries to inspire public support for those efforts by updating readers about the newest foundation-funded improvements at locations all along the road. If you visit a national park over July 4th, there's no point complaining about crowds. And that advice may go double for the ever popular parkway. My books strive to expand the options for parkway hikers. And a big way I do that is by suggesting strategies for finding solitude, even in popular places. Often that means finding an alternative starting point suggesting where the less fit can turn around. Or like this guy on the mountains to sea trail near Mount Mitchell, taking a hike to nowhere. 
I haven't always urged people to avoid popular trails. And in fact, I'm chagrined to admit that my guidebooks have possibly made some hikes more crowded, like the Tonawa Trail on a rough ridge seen here near Blowing Rock. There's no way to leave that hike out of a parkway guide, but I, but I cringe when I drive by and see all the cars parked below that scenic boardwalk. I first encountered that stack rock on Rough Ridge when it looked like this, long before the parkway and boardwalk were built. Back then, as founder of Grandfather Mountain's trail management program, I was trying to protect the trailless area from growing informal access. Maybe so, but as the parkway was about to open, I admit I wrote the first magazine article recommending the brand new hikes on that, that now popular, very popular mountainside. My books still invite hikers to the parkway, but they contain not just out of the way hikes, but ways to turn popular places into almost private escapes. Even a parkway adjacent commercial attraction like Grandfather Mountain can be uncrowded if you tackle the swing and bridge in winter. Sadly, even off season is busier than ever, but that's still a great time to winnow down the crowds and enjoy the parkway at its best. Both these scenes are the parkway's US 221 year entrance, I'm sorry, US 221 entrance in Blowing Rock. Gone are the days of seeing just a few cross country skiers at Town Park. Winter trail use is exploding but you can find off-season solitude. Hiking midweek can help. Granted, you know, taking off-season or midweek walks may not be best kept secrets, but they're common sense approaches that many people forget. If you have to visit at busy times, be sure to start your hike early. Have you ever heard the term leg stretcher trail? Well, that's what the parkway's short, easy paths are called like here at the Mountain Farm Trail near Charlottesville. The goal is to entice sedentary motorists out of the car for some fresh air, historic insight, or a nice view. The downside can be crowds though, but luckily it's often easy to reach even popular landmarks without throngs of people. My book's trail advice often urges avoiding main trailheads. I prefer taking lightly used feeder trails from quiet starting points. Case in point, Humpback Rocks near Charlottesville, Virginia, where the northernmost 20 miles of the parkway really show off Shenandoah Valley views from the sharp spine of the Blue Ridge. Talk about a popular perch that really draws spectators. Heavy hiker traffic can also cause trail damage, another reason why dispersing use is an important goal. All of us need to practice leave no trace principles, but maintenance is key. And foundation funding has helped hire dedicated trail crews this summer at both Humpback Rocks and the Tonawa Trail. If the parking lot at Humpback Gap is packed, don't start there. These steep steps are part of an often crowded, strenuous two mile, 700 foot vertical round trip climb to the rocks. To avoid that, pull into the quieter picnic area nearby and connect to the AT. You'll reach the rocks the back way on a longer and easier six mile moderate round trip. And most of the other hikers you'll see may look like this. But you'll still have that awesome view. South of Humpback Rocks at Peaks of Otter Lodge near Bedford, Virginia, Abbott Lakes is a popular, now handicapped, accessible loop, thanks to the Parkway Foundation. If it's too busy to park at the Peaks of Otter Visitor Center or Lodge, swing into the picnic area beside Big Spring and loop the lake from there after a peek inside the historic hostelry of Polly Woods Ordinary. This is also a great place to start a quiet hike up Flat Top along with Sharp Top, one of the two peaks of otter. The spectacular Grandfather Mountain portion of the parkway is iconic. The hike from the main Rough Ridge parking area on the combined Tonawa Trail, Mountains to Sea Trail, draws crowds to awesome views like this one of the famous Limco Viaduct, visible at the far right. Off-season or mid-wake hikes are best here, but my sensitivity to the area's 
popularity lets my books offer a sneakier suggestion for a secret start that begins a bit south at nearby Wilson Creek Overlook. It follows a much quieter portion of the Taunt Tonawa Trail through a rare boulder field forest to the summit of Rough Ridge. It'll still be busy at, at, the, at the summit, but when you head back the way you came, you'll likely be alone again instead of fighting an uphill flow of humanity. And if you gotta see the boardwalk near the bottom, do what great photographers like my friend Tommy White do and hit the trail at dawn or sunset and be sure to bring a headlight. The entire viaduct side of Grandfather is a busy place, but there are also many strolls on the Tonawa Trail that rarely see much traffic. One such spot offers the best view of the viaduct. Don't start from the visitor center where most people do. But again, I suggest starting at Wilson Creek overlook. Then don't turn right on Tonawa to Rough Ridge, but turn left with Tonawa for a quiet out and back walk where you'll see nary a fellow hiker. Best of all, where a side trail goes left, get set for this stunning postcard view. Down below, people walking the roadside from a nearby overlook only wish they had this vista. Between Cone Park's flowering meadow uplands and Price Park's scintillating lake, there are endless ways to avoid often crowded trailheads and find solitude. Frankly, that goes for the entire parkway if you know what to do and where to go. And my book, my books offer those insights. You don't have to tackle Cone Park's carriage roads from a few mobbed trailheads. I offer specific hikes at out of the way places. One hike I describe in Cone Park starts, quote, where a remote trailhead permits a lonely circuit in a normally busy Blue Ridge Parkway hiking area. On one COVID crowded recent weekend, I only saw two other hikers. The big guy is also full of excellent color topo maps and uh, that reveal even more access points. No parkway motorist should miss the view tower in Mount Mitchell State Park, just north of Asheville. Exactly why I've tried to make my book a single volume solution for hikers hopping on and off the parkway. And that includes the east highest trail that leaves the state park to cross the entire mountain range, the, the entire Black Mountain Range through national forest land. Talk about a mass appeal location. A graveyard fields combination of alpine meadows and waterfalls is hard to beat, but this destination south of Asheville can be crowded and bear activity has restricted camping lately. One solution, avoid the usual downhill start of this hike, leaving these steep wooden steps and admittedly great scenery of second falls to others. Why not reverse the counterclockwise loop described in trail guides? Start clockwise on the more gradual side of the loop, or better yet, don't finish the loop. In the least busy part of the fields, go left on a far less visited side trail to Upper Falls, and chances are you'll have it all to yourself. There are trails all along the parkway, like here in Jeffress Park, north of Deep Gap, that slip off to who knows where. The Mountains to Sea Trail in North Carolina is a prime example of the paths that exit stage right or left from the parkway and lead to solitude. The Cascades is a bustling Jeffress Park waterfall walk, but my book recommends starting nearby and a little south at Tompkins Knob Overlook and its log cabins. Take the quiet connector to the Cascades to create a longer, more relaxing combination of two leg stretchers. Want to truly ditch the crowd? From Tompkins Knob Overlook, most hikers head north, but look south across the grass to a little hole in the, hole in the woods where the Mountains to Sea Trail slips off to solitude. It's a marvelously white piney walk with a needle padded tread and gradual grade, just one, or, one of the pastoral places on the MST north of Blowing Rock. When you find nowhere, just turn around. In Virginia, it's the Appalachian Trail that departs the parkway for uncrowded walks. My big parkway guide contains a detailed mileage log to the entire road that lists the location by milepost of every overlook, entrance, exit, and more, including places where the Mountains to Sea Trail and AT cross the parkway. 
pick one of those places, park gently out of traffic on the grass, which is permitted, and hike one way or the other, maybe just flip a coin. Thanks to surging conservation efforts and the increasing, increasingly widespread philanthropy of organizations and parkway visitors like you, newly preserved, newly preserved lands buffer the parkway. This hike to nowhere follows a stirring colonial era road used by the over mountain men before the 1780 Battle of Kings Mountain. It starts just steps across the parkway from Hefner Gap Overlook near Linville Falls. Much of the initiative for today's cooperative conservation climate along the parkway and many of the high roads most noteworthy visitor sites can be attributed to longtime superintendent Gary Everhart. We sadly lost Gary in 2020, but his legacy lives on, especially for stellar trails like the Tonawa Trail. In my grandfather book, Parkway Landscape Architect Robert Hope recalled how Everhart literally willed that trail into being. We knew we wanted a foot trail to connect overlooks, Hope said, but there was no money, so the superintendent took it on. He convinced the Federal Highway Administration that the trail was an integral part of the parkway, and so it was funded, marveled, Trump, mar marveled Hope. You may not find a lot of solitude at Mabry Mill. Yes, also recently restored by the foundation. Or at the Blue Ridge Music Center. Yes, again, with programming that's managed by the foundation. But even here, there's a great, often overlooked hike to Fisher Peak, where you might hear the sound of music wafting up from the stage below. Even if the pandemic doesn't hang on, it may be, it may be best if, if we continue avoiding the crowds. At the very least, choosing out of the way places to hike may help us rediscover why a lot of folks got into hiking in the first place. I don't ever mind having a trail to myself. Even before the pandemic, my writings were encouraging the search for solitude. For decades, my goal has been to help people find that kind of experience on the trails of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Thank you so much, Randy. I'm gonna to have to be out there checking out some of those trails myself. Um, if you all have any questions that you'd like to ask of Randy that we can answer live, please go ahead. Um, we've had a few come in, so I'm gonna Pose those to you right now, Randy. Um, the first one is, do you have a favorite waterfall hike on the parkway to enjoy during the summer? Well, you know, uh, there are a lot of great waterfall hikes on the parkway, but I think my, my, my favorite is, is Crabtree Falls, just north of, uh, just north of Mount Mitchell. It, you know, when that water is really running, um, I, I always describe it as a, a, a Dance it, a dancing fan of foam. It just it just <laughs> spreads wide and rushes down in a big blur. And it's a, uh, it really is spectacular, but go during the week. Okay. Preferably Very. after a good, preferably after a good rainstorm. <laughs> That's a I love that hike. It's a great one and uh really refreshing. Um, we did have a, another question come in. It said, what would be the closest day hikes to the Northwest Trading Post, which is near Glendale Springs for folks who aren't familiar with that, that building? Um, I think you'd have to say that, boy, just two miles uh, south of um, um, the Northwest Trading Post is jumping off rocks. It's, it's not a super long day hike, but it's definitely one of the trails along the parkway that, that it's just a wonderful ramble and it's got a great view at the end of it. Um, Dalton Park is not, is not far north either. So um, great trails like the, um, like the Bluff Mountain Trail and, and you know, even the hike to Caudal Cabin you know, are, are not far from the Northwest Trading Post. And, and then again, um, Jeffers Park with the Tompkins Knob hike that I just described it is only a, a little bit south of jumping off rocks. So there's quite a bit there that's very close. Um, and in fact, refer in referencing the uh, Jeffers Park area um, and the Cascades Trail, consider hiking north of the Cascades as well on the Mountains to Sea Trail. Uh, you can start at Benge Gap 
and hike to the Cascades and back. And that would be an eight mile round trip to the Cascades, the vast majority of which is super, super scenic and, and very little visited. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of questions coming in now. Um, what are the crowds like at Ms. Mount Pisgah Trail these days? Um, someone is planning a trip there soon. Um, I'm not sure if you've you've been down there, Randy, for a while recently or. I haven't. Uh, well, I'm actually you know, this, this book, Hiking of Lurich Parkway, I'm actually in the process of updating it. So, um, yeah, the whole southern part of the parkway is in my travel plans in the next short, short while. But um, I haven't been there in. Um, during the pandemic, uh, but boy, if it's like all the other trails on, on, on the parkway, they've seen record views. So uh, once again, get there early in the morning. You know, I mean, my, my suggestion, pull into the Mount, Mount Pisgah Trail right after you've had breakfast at Pisgah Inn and, and get over there quick and get rolling. <laughs> It'll be cooler then too, because we've, <laughs> we've definitely had some warm weather. Um, we have a question, what trails and mile markers would you suggest near Asheville? Oh boy. Um, well, I'm, I'm pretty good at the mileage markers, um, but it's difficult to, to just identify a trail and automatically generate the, generate the mileage marker without referring to, yes, the mileage <laughs> log in the back of my book. There are 469 of those mileage markers, by the way. So that's a lot of stuff out, out, out there to remember, but um, not far from Asheville um, is, a, is a really nice trail. It, it goes to Rattlesnake Lodge. I like that. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, part of the, um, it's part of that little almost secret trail system that's off the side of the parkway that doesn't have a big parking area and, and all that. But um, in fact, the mileage log does that. Frequently, it will direct you off the parkway a short distance to some, um, uh, you know, not very far away, but to a trail that is not a designated Blue Ridge Parkway trail or one of the major trails that I discuss in the main body of, of the book. So there, there's plenty of that out, out there. I also like to go to uh, the Bent Creek area, which is by the North Carolina Arboretum. There are some super trails there, in, including the shut-in trail. And the mileage log has all the mileage markers for where the shut-in trail can easily be accessed from the side of the parkway. We have a very apt question because of your snowy background. Someone has asked, are there any snowshoe trail possibilities in winter? And I know you are a winter outdoors enthusiast, so. Yeah, I stumbled upon this picture behind me the last time I cross-country skied on the Flat Rock Nature Trail, which is right near Linville, right near Grandfather Mountain. And as you can see, there was two and a half feet of snow that day. And um, you have to ski across that wonderful ledge. Well, let me put it this way. Depending on snow conditions, many, many of the Parkway's Easy Lake Stretcher Trails are great snowshoe trails. Many of them are cross-country ski trails as well. Um, and, and in fact, I, I do have photographs and advice in hiking the Blue Ridge Parkway about which trails are suitable for, for, for what. In fact, the Flat Rock Trail, the parkway is unplowed in the wintertime to the Flat Rock Trail. So I described how easy it is to just walk up the park parkway a couple hundred yards and the Flat Rock Trail is accessible to you on skis or snowshoes. I still haven't tried that, but I'm going to have to this winter. <laughs> you okay. inspired me with your photo. Um, someone had asked if we could just define day hike for them either in hours or in terms of mileage. Well, you know, it's almost like the amount of snow there is on the ground. A, a, a day hike is going to be defined by how fit you are. <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of variables there. And um, the jumping off rocks trail could be a day hike, you know, if you're, if you're not particularly fit or, or you're just getting into hiking and are counting on doing a lot of hiking to get you in shape. My guess is a day hike is anywhere from, I would say, three to to four hours long. And for instance, the Boone Fork Trail at, uh, in Price Park is a great day hike. It's one of the longest parkway uh, uh, dedicated trails and it's about five miles. And I, believe me, you know, that, that's a big loop off the parkway and it will take you probably 
anywhere from two to four hours, especially with all the waterfalls there are to stop and see and the evidence of old logging railroads and things like that. Um, I, I would consider a four day, a, a, rather a four hour hike, a good day hike. Okay, let's see, we, we do have a couple other questions. What's your favorite hike for a 360 degree view without lots of people? <laughs> um, well, you know, those are, the kind of, those are the kind of hikes that I'm most fond of. And um, one of the pictures in this book where the, the sea of cloud, rather in the book, but also in the slideshow, um, where the sea of clouds was out there and you could see Mount Mitchell in the distance, that was taken from the top of McRae Peak on Grandfather Mountain, uh, where the Grandfather Trail climbs ladders over cliffs and all that stuff. Um, there are a lot of fit people out there, and that's a high adventure hike that I recommend. But you know, climbing ladders over cliffs is going to weed out. It's going to weed out a lot of people. So when you get to the top up there, you, you, there it should not be over, overly crowded at all. That's one. That's probably my. I mean. Grandfather Mountain brought me to North Carolina years ago, and that's that mountain and that hike is still one of my favorites. 